Welcome to Parnell Park. It's a little bit chilly, but still dry for the Dublin Senior B Hurling Championship semi final. St. Finbar is awaiting in the final. Who will face them? Will it be Kilmacud Crokes or will it be Kula? Big weekend for Kula, who are also in action in the Senior A semi finals tomorrow. That also live on Dubs TV. At the moment, our concentration is on the B semis and. Um, Oh, not to put too fine a point on, on it, but uh, let's hope it's a bit better than the last game, which kind of faded in the last quarter. Yeah, Finbar has just pulled away there in the, in the second half, but this should be a, a much closer contest. Uh, looking at the two teams, they seem to be very evenly matched. Uh, good mix of experience and youth in both teams, so it should be a cracking contest. Well, let's have a look at the teams as Kula get ready to play. They're obviously in the red today. Kimmel Cook Crokes in the mostly white jerseys with the purple on the sides. The referee, by the way, is Sean McCarthy couple of changes late for Kula. Kilmacud Crokes, we think, are as named, but we'll get that confirmed as soon as the ball throws in. As you've mentioned, experience and youth on both sides. Both of these clubs, obviously, are in the senior A as well, so this is kind of a step-up squad, and in some cases, a, a step-down squad for guys who have played a lot of senior A over the years. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's multi-purpose. You have lads that are looking to make the jump to A, and then you have a few lads that are probably maybe a few miles under the belt and stuff like that that are, are playing B at the end of the year or whatever so it's a, it's a good contest and you know probably a credit to both clubs that they can be involved in, in the end of the year in the B Championship and the A Championship so you know signs the, the numbers and the, the quality players they have out there well Crokes won't be involved tomorrow so this is it at senior level either of the senior levels for them for Kula obviously they're going after a double Kula going through their warm-up. A couple of experienced names in their team. Shane Stapleton is in there. A couple of All-Ireland Club medals for him. Also in there, young Owen O'Callaghan. But he, of course, is the brother of Khan. Unlike Khan, though, he is a defender. Yeah, like his brother Keane. Keane probably be that. The biggest name in the house, Keane, I'd like to say. <laughs> well, in a defensive sense and in a hurling sense, he certainly is. So they're both going through their warm-ups. Kula, what a success they've made of themselves in the last couple of years. Kilmacud Crokes, their manager, Paddy Lenehan, he's been central to developing young talent for Crokes in recent times. He's won two minor titles as a manager. This is the first time he's ever managed an adult team at Kilmacud Crokes. Before his minor success, he managed the under-16s uh, to a title as well. So he knows all about winning with this team, Kilmacud Crokes. With some players, as we say, who have experience in senior A, you think of the like of uh, Barry O'Rourke, who's actually played for Dublin, Rob Murphy at uh, centre-back, also in there as well. Uh, the likes of Owen Sheehy, who's an older brother of Brian, who featured well for the seniors uh, this year. Of course, they were knocked out in the quarter-final. Uh, Ronan Walsh from Claren Bridge in Galway. It'll be interesting to see what he can do from wing-back. Connor Clinton, obviously, in there as well. Connor, many years ago, part of a Dublin Colleges team that won an All-Ireland title, that's going way, way back. Uh, you probably don't even remember that, Owen. You were, were you even under 10 at that stage? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I remember it, but you don't. Youth is on your side. Um, what kind of game are you expecting? I said, I said it'd be a good, good game. I, I, I think both teams are going to probably try play as much hurling as, as possible, if that makes sense. Um, if you compare it to the, the Finbars game there, the previous Finbars punted a lot. They relied on a lot of hard work and you know, turnovers and things like this where I'd say both these teams will, will want to hurl and try to get as many scores on the board as possible. Um, like you said, Crokes will look to the lads like, like Rob Murphy, Connor Clinton, and Ronan Walsh. Lads with experience like that, which will all be kind of big physical lads. Um, so they'll be looking to kind of win that platform there in the half-back, half-forward line. Um, you know, Kula, the class actually speaks for themselves at how many All Irelands they have in the club, and you know, quite often teams will train their A and B teams together, so a lot of that has to rub off. And you know, you've Nisha Waldron in there, who's been a consistent starter over the year for, for Kula, so he's going to have a big influence over the game as well. Michael Roach going over to have a word with the referee, Sean McCarthy. We're about to get underway. Kula against Kilmacud Crokes. I'm not sure if you class it as a local rivalry, rivalry, but it certainly is a rivalry. They're, they're close enough to each other, but I don't think the parishes at any point touch off each other. But it, it does seem like a rivalry. Yeah, and I think it probably helps that a lot of them go to school together and clash to own. And, you know, a lot of them run in the same circle. So there's no love lost between the teams, most definitely not. That's certainly true. At any level, 
in hurling in Dublin. It's a rivalry between these two. You've got Chemical Crooks and Kula. Yeah, and then Dwight Hall, of course, which would be up there with them. Obviously. The teams in Dublin. Obviously. Well, Kula have had great success in the last couple of years with all Ireland titles and Dublin titles. Their progress came shuddering to a halt last season when they were beaten by St Mullins of Carlow in the AIB Leinster Club Championship. Unfortunately, no provincial club championship this season. It just can't be squeezed into the calendar. It's, I think people understand why it isn't there, but it will be missed. So Dublin is the world of all these club hurlers this season because that's the highest you can go. And it's, 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 it's quite a contest in Dublin. It always is. It's quite an honour to win it. It's hard to win in hurling and football. And you won't miss a, a puck or a kick in the next couple of weeks at senior grade as we bring you the semi-finals. And then provide us... They're available to us, we'll bring you the finals as well. But if we're not showing them, RTE or TG Cahar will be, so you will be able to watch them. We know you'd love to be here, you can't be. So we hope to bring you the atmosphere and the intensity of the occasion as we get underway between Kilmacud Crokes and Kula with St. Finbars awaiting the winners. Alex Hatt drags it. Is it going to stay in play? He tried to keep it in play, Michael Roach, but couldn't. No, probably have more time than he was. Uh, good set of wheels, and then just get five or six steps ahead of the defender. Maybe just settle himself. But so confidence will be up after that anyway. Loose ball. It will go to Crooks. Gibbons jogs over. Remember, you can get in contact with us. We'd love to hear from you at Dub GAA Official. Many of you got the weekend pass and you'll watch all four games this weekend. And what a day we have in store tomorrow with two senior A semi finals. It is the B teams that get their goal today. Murray took it straight out of the sky. It was a good take. Presents it well. That's a good hook. Couldn't get his shot away. Damian Kelly, one of the more experienced campaigners out there. Dennis Murray. Barry O'Rourke. Brother of Oshin O'Rourke. And that's one that Oshin will be pleased with. Barry O'Rourke sticks it over. First point of the game. Crooks lead. Good score. First ball for Barry. And he puts it over. But Dennis Murray serious pace to get the ball. And a very attack and direct play. Crooks pressing right up. Michael Roach making it very difficult for Owen O'Callaghan. It spills into the path of a cooler man. But... I'm not sure, is that a free or a line ball? But either way, the decision goes Kula's way and the goalkeeper, Ryan De Fleece, comes out to take it. Matthew's coming out for a side, that's all. It must yeah. have been a, a free for a low Need turn by... Owen Sheehy. The family of cornerbacks, that's where his brother plays as well. Here's Donald Lane. This will be launched by Brian Fitzgerald. Keepers under this, it's Ben Hines. Tried to shepherd it out. He kind of got away with it. Gibbons was there. Now it's Ronan Walsh, originally from Claren Bridge in County Galway. O'Toole tries to get there. Now it's Damian Kelly. Now Keane. Kicked away by Murray into the path of Marco Lachlan. Just couldn't get it into his hands as the lights come on in Parnell Park. You can probably see wherever you're watching it. It's, it's quite dark. It's a dark evening. It is a dry evening. And Kula get another free. Yeah, both teams are very good. Well. Very much up for the game. A lot of big hits. Scrappy 50 50 balls. Being far for so Both teams are, are definitely up for it. As we said, not a local rivalry, but definitely a rivalry. And a has that derby feel about it, doesn't it? Yeah, straight away, much more atmosphere and much louder than the, the first semi final that was on here today. The fleece. Batted away out of trouble, chasing after it, Ronan Walsh. Kicks it out of danger, trying to get there is James Dillon. Oh, but it's Kula who get it. It's Justin Byrne. 
tipped away from you. Good defending by Kendall Cookbrook. Swarm defending as one might call it. Stephen Beal. Cool to have an extra man back there. Shane Stapleton, originally from Bursley and Tipperary, part of the crew that won two All-Ireland club titles. Let down the park by Shane Murphy. The Stapleton house full of medals after the last couple of years between his Dublin, Leinster and All-Ireland titles and of course Paddy's Tipperary and Munster titles as well as his All-Ireland titles with Tipperary in the past. Here's Barry O'Rourke speaking of winning brothers and he puts it over, his second. Good start for Barry O'Rourke, two balls, two points. Um, just clinical, makes space for himself and puts it over the ground. It's a good start for the club looking for. De Fleece. Intercepted by McGarrelt. Jack Lehart slid into it but couldn't get the purchase on it. He wanted the ball, kind of gets held up on the perfect surface. Here's Shane Murphy. Chasing after it, McGarrelt. Getting there is Justin Byrne. He looks like a kind of a wiry wing forward, doesn't he? He's not afraid to run. That's a good pop pass to McGarrelt. McGarrelt turns his man. They have to bring him down. It will be a free in. And that should definitely be a yellow card. I think it's Stephen Beale who brought him down. Just outside the box. I think probably fell inside the box, but I think the initial foul is from outside, so be free. Um, but very direct, very direct from um, Kamara on there. You know, just one thing in his mind when he got the ball. And, Good, no other option to bring him down. And no card. Which is surprising. That's a cynical professional foul. I thought that would have been a yellow card. Brian Fitzgerald. Start the game in place of Dara Toomey. Cool up, get off the mark. Yeah, nice read. Nice read. Straight in front of us, tap it over. Ben Hines flights it long. Michael Roach ran onto it. That'll be a tough one to take, but it is taken, and bravely so by Ronan Walsh. And Kula get it back. There's massive hits going on out there. It's like a wrecking ball flying around the place. Shane Stapleton trying to get there. The experienced fullback. He's up against Barry O'Rourke, so he has his hands full. Barry tries the crossfielder, it works out really well. Michael Roach into the keeper's hand. De Fleece is giving it away. Oh, it just goes under the stick of Dennis Murray. Took his eye off it for a second. Kulik, stay composed and get it out. Nisha Waldron, so experienced, dispossessed on this particular occasion by Gibbons. Gibbons keeps it in play, does really well. Has a look up and fires it long. Is he going for it? He is. It's going to drift away to the keepers left and wide. Initially great play by uh, Michael Gibbons. Uh, great dispossession. Maybe a small bit of rush of blood to the head. He's better off playing it in. Barry Oak has two points. Maybe try to keep feeding him. But there's a great pace to this game already. Uh, referee Sean McCarthy has let things flow. And there's good hits and good intensity so far. Cool of winners in the middle. It's Shane Murphy. Murphy aims it in low. Always good to see forward out in front here is Justin Byrne! Has to settle for a point, but I think he was going for goal. Yeah, probably had more space to, to run the ball in there. We've seen him a couple of times run it. It's a very quick fella. Probably should have threatened the goal there at least. Might have been Brian Fitzgerald who slipped the ball to him. It was really good work. Up in the air goes the heart. Keeps it in play. Alex Hat is there. Hat goes to ground. Beal. Beal into the corner. Shane Stapleton turns on the afterburners he's up against Barry O'Rourke O'Rourke takes it O'Toole that's a really good score by O'Toole who's just out of minor really good score just uh, settles himself tight angle and put it over the bar um, a great play again from Barry O'Rourke to first win the ball and then recycle it into the better scoring position lost in flight here's Rob Murphy who's Played senior A for Crokes to Damien Kelly, who's also played senior A. James Dillon has it, but we'll stop James Dillon, son of Mick Dillon, who won an All-Ireland football title with Kendall Cut Crokes in the mid-90s. I think that was a bang from on the head of Rob Murphy there, just as he gave the hand pass off. Small bit of advantage, but brings it back to the three now, which is good referee. No 
no matter where in the world you're watching from we'd love to hear from you at Dub GA Official is where you'll find us on Twitter you'll also get us on Instagram and Facebook Michael Roach takes the free and slaps it over it's a louder game it's a faster game it's a more intense game than the last one isn't it yeah great post with so far uh, both teams are, are really going on and attacking her and Crooks win the loose one on she takes the shoulder from Toomey but stays going and wins the free and the rain has begun to fall it will make conditions that bit more difficult yeah because the pitch is in such a good, good condition um, it's become very slippery players will be slipping and the ball is going to slide that extra bit more so players touch will be critical now well, off camera, players at the front of the stand are now moving to the back of the stand. That's got plenty of legs, but not enough accuracy. Marco Lachlan sends it wide. De Vlies. Coming out to meet it is Andy Power. Power tries to get away from Rob Murphy. That's a big hit from Marco Lachlan, and you can hear the cheer from the Crooks bench. All the atmosphere for the team self-generated now because there's no fans in. Great hit, Andy Power is now slouch himself, so great hit from Mark Lachlan to get across and put him out over the line. That's a really good line ball. Trying to get there is Barry O'Rourke holding him off is Shane Stapleton. O'Rourke does, does get there, Stapleton gives away the 65, he protests, but uh, his protests fall on deaf ears. Yeah, good battle going on there, two experienced players. Um, couldn't see from here whether it was out before or not, but you know, Crooks take this chance anyway. Shane Stapleton has come through injury issues over the last couple of years. He has worked incredibly hard to get back playing top level hurling, so it's good to see him out there. But any time I bump into him, I love to remind him that Paddy's better. And Paddy loves that too. Sure, Shane loves that as well. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when I meet Paddy, I tell him Shane is better. So. Michael Roach with the 65. High and over. And that was a tough one to strike because the rain is falling. There's a bit of a breeze. And he was at an angle. Two for two for Michael Roach now, which is a good start. De Vlies. Beal couldn't take it. Ball goes loose, might fall the way of Jack Lahart. It's a battle zone in the middle there, isn't it? It's like a destruction derby. Justin Byrne can't get his pass away cleanly. Lahart was in there again, much to his credit, he kind of kicked it out to Shane Murphy. Murphy back to Lahart. Lovely shuffle by Lahart. Crooks outnumber Kula inside there. But it does fall to Brian Fitzgerald, who's made a bit of time, made a bit of space. And slots that one over really well. Good score for Fitzgerald. His second of the game, he's first from play. Good score, wouldn't sound great the ball, and just at the time composure to set himself and put it over. Ben Hines, who I'm sure wants to contest that number one in the club spot with Matt Collins. James Dillon riding the goal for Dillon does really well, steps is the cry, but Rona Walsh plays on. A lot of cooler bodies back there. McGarrell takes it easily. Then runs into a bit of trouble and gets fouled and it's a free out. Oran right, seems to be dropping deep there. He's playing as a wing forward and he was the, the player that created that goal chance early on, but he's dropped for the chemical puck out, it looks like. from a long long way out that's going to drop it's going to be dangerous it's going to come out to Marco Lachlan receives a bounce from Andy Power James Dillon every ball is being ferociously fought for here that's a cooler ball it was hit out by James Dillon I think referee and officials agree 
Yeah, I think from up here I could hear Rob Murphy shouting for that high ball coming in, but three Kilmacud cool players jumped for the same ball, but I think that's just the nature of the game so far, that they're not willing to get a chance and everyone is fighting for every ball that they can. Nisha Waldron. Picked up by Marco Lachlan. Intercepted. Shot from a long way out. That's Donal Lane. Well guarded by Hines. He might be able to get in here. Here's Alex Hatt. Can't get it into the hand. Gets it to Damian Kelly. Damian Kelly from a long way out and an awkward angle. It will drop inside. Oh, it does break. And it's fumbled in by Barry O'Rourke. It might have been Michael Roach who got the last touch, but either way, it doesn't matter. Didn't see like the last touch, but just a messy ball. Uh, Kula probably had the helmets back there to deal with him. Just a, a bit of confusion. Yeah, just before the, the first water break there, the rain is coming down a lot heavier now. And, uh, yeah, the water break has arrived early, hasn't it? Well, we'll get a look at that goal when the water break does come. It was either Roach or O'Rourke, but I think they can both take credit. They both kind of made it. Here's Damien Kelly, who let the ball in in the first place. Swept up by Shane Stapleton, who barges so too out of the way. James Dillon in there as well, trying to fight back for it. I had been told he was Mick's son. He's actually no relation to that Mick Dillon. He's John Dillon's son. John originally from Aaron's own in Cork. Played Cork Minor, actually. Is that a good score? It is a good score. Really good stuff. Really good score from the cornerback on Sheehy there. Really good score. Yeah. He's marking uh, Jack Toomey from Pula just come up the pitch. And, you know, as a cornerback, once you get that bit of freedom, you'll always go with it. That was a really good strike. Now, we might get a look at this goal in just a moment. We know it was scored, but we just don't know by who. My suspicion is Barry O'Rourke. I think he fumbled it in. We'll have a look at the... Uh, scores that came before it as well. Michael Roach creating it well for Barry O'Rourke. They combined there for a point. They combined for the goal as well. Justin Byrne tried to slip away from Rob Murphy. And did very well. McGarrelt turning and twisting and going to ground. He fell inside the box but was fouled outside if that makes sense. And Stephen Beale got no card for that. Brian Fitzgerald slotted it over. Shane Murphy going low, Brian Fitzgerald turning and twisting, popping inside to Justin Byrne who followed up and scored possibly could have gone for goal, at the time you did remark Owen that he had a bit more time than he thought here's Aaron O'Toole not a bad point from him Michael Roach two frees for him so far this one of them Andy Power not afraid to have a go as he got a big hit there from Marco Lachlan Michael Roach, that is second free. Brian Fitzgerald winning the breaking ball, running into space and turning and striking it over. So this is the goal. That's O'Rourke at 14. Just got the last touch, Michael Roach. He stole the goal. It was going in anyway. So he's now on 1 2. It is Michael Roach who got the goal. Michael Roach and Barry Rocker having a good competition there to see if can get the most scores, but uh, as long as it goes in, both of them put the effort in. Kilmer could just look that bit more threatening when they get the ball up front. Um, it's noticeable how fast and direct their players are when they get the ball, that they, you know, their, their first instinct is to take their man on and, and run at them. De Fleece. Andy Power comes out to meet it. Gets away from Rob Murphy. The stick pass was dropped and trying to get it up on the second attempt is Nisha Waldron. Waldron turning, twisting. That's a really good, clever pass by Waldron. Fitzgerald wants it and gets it. He is surrounded, but he gets his shot away and it goes over rather than under. Really good play by Kevin there. Lovely play. First round, Nisha Waldron, I think it was. Uh, quick hand pass to Oran. Another quick hand pass to Jack Fitzgerald. Three points now, I think, from White County. That's right, Brian Fitzgerald with three. Batted away, but only as far as James Dillon. Off the court, Dillon's. Hit down towards the 20 metre line. Shane Stapleton comes out and holds it up. 
Barry O'Rourke trying to shovel it into his hands. Staples it is so strong, they can't knock him off the ball. Dermot Mass did very well. Andy Power, Justin Byrne. That's Rob Murphy's ball. He actually lets it off for his teammate, but Waldron comes in to try and nick it. Michael Gibbons had to fight hard, but did get the possession. Now gets a bit of time, gets a bit of space. Good hand pass, Damien Kelly. Kelly lets it in, but he kind of got crossed between two minds there as to whether he was going for the point or letting it in. Either way, the forwards didn't read it and didn't follow up. Whether that's on Kelly or the forwards, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe the fact that the rain is coming down quite heavy there, slippy ball or a right group kind of fact that he just slipped at the wrong moment and gone for the shot there. Damien Kelly on it again, such a sturdy presence. It's picked away from him by the heart. Sheehy trying to go after this barrier work. Him and Stapleton are having quite the battle. It'll just hold up. Stapleton is really strong. He won't move an inch. Here's O'Toole. Good stick pass. Damien Kelly, lots of calls for passes. Kelly takes it on himself and hits a third wide for Crooks. No, uh, probably not the shooting zone that we talk about. Uh, coming off the back of that last shot he took, maybe. Probably got a decision to, to try working with this game down there. The Crooks were desperately disappointed to go out at the Senior A loss to a battling Luke and Sarsfields team. Luke will be in action tomorrow in the Senior A semi finals, but uh, they can still grab a B title, and that does mean something to clubs. It certainly means something to the teams themselves as well. In this most unusual of year, years. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the A or B it doesn't matter because it's, it's, it's the big competition for these players, and that's what it matters at the end of the day that these are the lads are trying, and so. Cool to get a bit of a boost to free and that is then moved on. Alex being called over by the referee Alex Hat. Brian Fitzgerald looking for his second point from a free, he's fourth overall. Tough conditions, but he should. St oh, talk about commentators' curse, that's a really poor wide. First wide for Kula. Good ball to Rob Murphy, fumbled, but regathered, then Nisha Waldron dispossessed him. Rob Murphy gets it back. Good composure. Ronan Walsh. Across the field it goes. Can Barry O'Rourke get there? He guides it into the path of O'Toole. O'Toole goes to ground. Mass picks it up. Stick passes it into danger. Damien Kelly almost intercepting. Now James Dillon tries his best. Kelly has another go. Here's James Dillon. Well taken by the goalkeeper. Garrett. That's actually just a burn. Down towards Waldron. That's a poor ball out of defence, a rush ball out of defence. Don Lane, nice pass. That's going to drop inside the square. Waldron at a tight angle. It was a risky ball when he had a tidier one to Andy Power, but it does come to Power now. Nice little poke inside to McGarrett. Steps inside Beal, gets his shot away and gets his point. Love this goal, just throws it over the himself that extra few seconds and sticks it over the bar. Crokes, Crokes, very sloppy with the ball and rolling back and kind of getting turned over. One of the games doing well to, initial, to win the initial ball and then distribution power enough and the same probably be said for Rob Murphy who could have higher standards than that that he'd be like looking to get the ball into the forward line as quick as he can and said he's, he's taking the extra touch or the extra second and getting turned over as a result. Well the referee has stopped play, the linesman is coming in.
We'll resume with a Crokes free, which will be struck by Marco Lachlan. A little bit of a breeze out there, it's kind of swirling. Is it tailing? No, it isn't. It's a good score by Marco Lachlan. Mark's playing well so far, he's really putting himself about. Uh, been on the, the giving end maybe of a couple of big hits and you know, he's, he's certainly a presence around there. Cook's first score since the water break. First time ball by Sheehy, he's frustrated, you might have heard that. control it, McGarrett does control it. Waldron has a bit of work to do here. Spoons it up towards Brian Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald back to Waldron. Waldron trying to shake off Gibbons. Hits a crossfielder, it's 50-50 at best. Falls into the path of Alex Hatt. Hatt loses it, Kula fighting really hard there. Now it's Andy Power. Power, good save, but a poor, poor shot. It really was straight at the keeper. Yeah, straight at the keeper. Ben Hyde still did well to, to gather and then put a long launch of ball into the, the coach forwards. With Brian Fitzgerald and Ron McGarrell who points since the water break for Kula. They've had a goal chance as well, which they haven't taken. There's no one in there for Crokes. They've kind of lost their shape a little bit. They have. That's the third ball they put in that's been kind of aimless. Uh, Barry O'Rourke was kind of man in the, the square at the start of the game and has come out kind of around the 45 now. Maybe they need to go back in. There's, there's nobody inside the, the Crooks 45 at the moment. Niall Keane hits a fairly aimless ball as well. It goes out for a Crooks line ball. About five minutes to go to the break because the, the clock wasn't stopped for the uh, water break. I'm judging off the stadium clock as opposed to the one on your screen. but. It will be a Crokes ball, Michael Gibbons. Yeah, good game so far, though, Rushy. Both teams are bringing an intensity to it that probably wasn't there in the, in the last semi final. And as a result the, of the intensity that the hurl probably isn't as, as slick as we might like to, to see. Um, it's just a, a different type of fascinating to watch the, the battle of hooks and blocks instead of scores. As per usual with these two, any drop ball is pounced upon, as in you get no time or space or kind of time to retrieve the error if you drop it you're immediately swarmed here's Brian Fitzgerald who's been excellent so far not fouled ball goes loose Justin Byrne couldn't take it cleanly but could have get the free yeah just play shoulder clip is actually a small bit um, good free but exactly right which one that anytime the ball is, is loose or anyone takes that extra second on the ball um, both teams are pouncing on trying to turn over because conditions are, are slippy out there, the, the ball is coming loose quite quickly. And as a result, it's a scrappy is the wrong kind of word, but it's a, it's a well fought game so far. Gerald. Four for him now, two from place balls, two from play. Tim McCook Crooks won seven, Kula six points. Coming close to half time. And Hart tries to flick it into the hands. We might have to throw this one in. That's exactly what we are going to do. Yeah, Kula bringing numbers back on the Kimmacud puck out there that there was four Kula players around the, the two Kimmacud ones in the breaking ball there. Crooks win the possession. Just one point since the water break. 
it hasn't been what you call free-flowing Kula blocked them up and they've done it again but Croaks win it back here's O'Toole options are limited so he has to kind of play a 50-50 Damien Kelly is trying to get there well taken Alex Hatt Damien Kelly just won't climb enough no and when you're taking shots like that you have to put the bed because it kind of gives Kula a platform a, a bit of an aimless ball but defeats there but in general if you keep it catch the ball and not some tough it doesn't let the other team set up Looks to me like Owen O'Callaghan got away with one there, leaned into the back of the forward, pushed him over, and now it's Kula who get the free. Crooks making a change. Marco Lachlan is going off, coming in, Connor Hayes. Hayes immediately kind of slots into that centre back channel. Yeah, I thought Mark was, uh, was playing well and uh, he was putting himself about. I'm not sure if there's an injury there or change of tactics, maybe. I don't know. To fleece. Oh, Kula have won it. Can they get the score? It's Jack Toomey. They're claiming that it went wide off a of Croke's defender, but goes just wide off the cooler shot no I think he's saying is he saying 65 now yeah it's the 65 now changed his mind I had thought originally it was wide then he just kind of slices the shot Gerald has the legs over it goes good score yeah. it's just, it's just, it's one there, but it's just three takeaways four or five he's got now missed completely by James Dillon Waldrop good pass it's Brian Fitzgerald That's a wonderful score, beautifully worked as well, and you can hear what it means to Kula. Yeah, the game's lift intensity again. Uh, Sarah, just a great pass across, so finds some space. He's easy pass to get off the bar, and it's a, a good score for Kula. I hope that kind of cheering and shouting from the Kula players came across to you at home. We could hear it loud and clear here in the stadium. Kula are absolutely bossing it at the moment. Here's Nisha Waldron. Sprays it into the corner for Fitzgerald. As a runner off him, let go himself, he's in confident form. Really good score, working with the Lions, on our panel, makes the dirty ball, each wall's in there with the long ball into space. Fitzgerald again, it's the clinical finishing. Well, we know that Kula have good forwards, but they must have amazing forwards if Brian Fitzgerald isn't involved in the A team to feature tomorrow. He has been excellent so far, three from play, freeze three from play and uh, he has helped Kula back into this game not that they were ever out of it but it's a one point game at half time Kula 1-7 uh, sorry Kula Croaks 1-7 Kula 9 points we'll run through the highlights in just a second but what have you made of it Owen? Good game of hurling yeah you know, Kula probably disappointed to be down at the, at the break scrappy goal that they, they probably won't be happy to concede um, both teams are playing very well playing direct hurling there's no sweepers nothing like that they're trying to put the ball in long uh, they're trying to play an intense brand where they're hunting in packs there. They're trying to get hooks and blocks. So it's been an exciting first half. Let's have a look at the highlights of the first half and some of the uh, best scores. Barry O'Rourke getting one of his two points there. Him and Shane Stapleton are having quite the battle. Michael Roach and Barry O'Rourke who would combine for the goal, which you'll see in a second. Combining for another point there. Justin Byrne running hard at that Kilmacud Croaks defence. They've already made a change. Here's Oran McGarrett. 
brought down outside the square by Stephen Beale, who didn't get a card for that incident. Brian Fitzgerald, one of his six first half points. Seven first half points, I should say. Anyway, here's Justin Byrne. Couldn't keep his shot down. I think he was going for goal. I had zip, but just wasn't low enough. Aaron O'Toole, young lad just out of minor, squeezed this one over nicely. Michael Roach, he scored 1-2 in the first half. This is a free that he slotted over. Andy Power taking on all comers. That quite the bounce from Marco Lockton. Michael Roach, his second free of the half. Brian Fitzgerald, we've been talking about him a lot and you're seeing in these highlights why. And here is the goal. Damien Kelly with a, a ball dropped into the forward line. Kula didn't deal with it. Swept on there by Barry O'Rourke and touched home by Michael Roach. Since that though, Kula have kind of got on top. Kula have got the best of it. Waldron. Under pressure, got the pass away. Fitzgerald running off the man. Received it. You thought, well, was he going to go for goal? Maybe he was, but... Again, it went over rather than under. Rob Murphy, one of the more experienced players for Clinical Crokes, has played for the senior A's, dispossessed. And Oran McGarrett taking his score well. Marco Lockton went off not long after this, but this was a very well struck free. Crokes getting turned over quite a lot. They'll be disappointed with this. Andy Power forcing the save from Ben Hines, but in truth, it wasn't what you'd call it dramatic save getting him behind Justin Byrne winning the free which Brian Fitzgerald did the necessary for and slotted home Fitzgerald again doing it from all angles and all places that one climbed over great stick work from Kula great finish from Fitzgerald here he is again another good finish makes it look easy so that's the story at the break Kilmacud Crokes leading by a point but by far and away Kula have had the best of it in the uh, second half of the first half Brian Fitzgerald ha has got five out of Kula's six points since the water break Crokes with only one point in that period uh, they had a six point lead going into the water break but at half time there's only one between them. Kilmacud Crokes 1-7, Kula 9 points. Uh, you'll continue to see the picture, but you won't hear the sound for a few minutes. We'll be back with second half commentary soon. Stay with us.
trouble with drinking water in a rush. Sometimes it goes down the wrong way. James Dillon croaks going down the wrong way in the second half, but Dillon tries to spark them in the uh, beginning of that second half. Trying to steal it back to Shane Murphy, but the referee is giving the free out. So as we were saying there, Owen, Crokes had a great start in the first half. In the second half of the first half after the water break, Kula had the better of it. And immediately Dylan went off in a run and maybe, just maybe, he should have popped it over. Yeah, uh, both teams are trying that direct run and a goal. Um, it probably was difficult to say there what he should have done. Maybe the shot wasn't on if he could try to kind of pass, but you know, it's, uh, both teams are, are playing very direct running. Beal. Line ball to Kula. thing with the halftime breaks when the teams have to stay outside they do seem th that bit short yeah they do yeah um, it's, a, it's, an it's an interesting change that teams might have in their own clubhouse dressing room they might have whiteboards or something that they can put a few stats on whereas these days you, you're kind of limited in what information you can show at halftime so just the, the consequences of COVID are far reaching Brian Fitzgerald from Waldron's line ball pick up at the start of the second half where he left off in the first half five out of the six that Kula scored towards the end of the first half came from Brian Fitzgerald couldn't add one there yeah and he is he is on form but definitely the wrong decision there running away from goal out from the sideline better off trying to work into a better angle Ron Walsh it's a diagonal just won't break for Crooks Kula backs have been on top for the last while Nisha Waldron Hayes with the high tackle. Yeah, it'll be yellow anyway. I don't think it was malicious, just kind of caught him high and made sure I was through the hands up in there and, and, and came back with the dangerous ones and high tackles. Just a tick. Yeah, Sean has definitely let the, the game flow anyway. Yeah, he's of the Barry Kelly variety, isn't yeah, he? Just yeah. let it go. Yeah, I, I, I'd be all in favour of letting it go, but sometimes I think a yellow card is, is justified. And there's been two incidents now where chemical players have got off yellow cards. Or sorry, excuse me, there was a, a cooler player in the first half. Waldron from a long way out. Wide. Referee just says to Ben Hines, make sure everyone is outside the 20 metre line. <laughs> Slotted ball to Roman Walsh. <laughs> really well taken by Connor Clinton. Brooksman gets out in front, that is a two. Looking to add to the point he got in the first half. Right over the black spot. Good score by O'Toole. Really good score by O'Toole. Quick shimmy and over the bar. That's perfect for a four play. De Vlies gives this one plenty. Oh, luckily for Crokes. He's tidied up by Gibbons. Beal was the intended target. It didn't come to him. Try and shovel it on to Gibbons. Gibbons does well, to be fair. Then takes a big hit from Lahart. Waldron. Gibbons is still down. They'll have to play on. Here's Ronan Walsh. Now they'll stop. Okay, we're not happy about that hit. So it was a far side. I don't know. Probably was a bit into the face, but. That the benefit of the doubt in the well, as we've seen, the ref is letting things flow, which you do want and you do credit refs when they do that. But yeah, Kill McCord really not happy with that, though. Gibbons is still down. Let's hope he's okay. This is the incident here, on. Yeah, 
he got him in the... Yeah, it's a free at the very least, anyway. Yeah, I would have said it was a free. He got, he got him in the face, all right. And he, he looks to be in quite a bit of pain. He's having a good game. Uh, Michael Gibbs is coming out with a lot of ball there. He's a, a strong character. You know, that a lot of ball has gone into that goal for forward line. He's done well to come out with some... Gibbons is back up again, Gibbons. And the ref is having a word with the uh, linesman. Gibbons will play on, that's good. Yeah, Sean McCarthy telling that chemical keeper that's an indirect free, but I don't think that matters a massive amount. Hines. Who can make a break for them? Swept on by Roach. Roach tries to get away from the heart, pops it behind, but it's intercepted by a cooler hand. In the way is Ronan Walsh. Too much on that. Slotted away by De Fleece. That's a really strong take, a really good fetch in the air. Toomey. Beal will get there. Shoveled on by Hayes. Won't she? He ran into trouble. Got ambushed. Lost possession. Here's Byrne. The Garrett. The Garrett was trying to find two. Meet. The referee is giving the free to Crooks. No, it's a free in, I beg your pardon. I think he's been advantage, was he? But, uh, brought forward now for Mouse. And that has been uh, not the first time Tom McCoy has been punished for, for Mouse. But McGarrell's for cool at the gun to support now has done really well so far. Fitzgerald. Good score from Fitzgerald. who's showing his experience, he's kind of popping up everywhere. That one drifted in over the top, trying to get there now for Crokes is Mark Linsky. Does well. Nisha seems to be playing that uh, free roll. He's number 15 on his back, but he's playing around the midfield. Speak of the devil, Waldron going for a score. Oh, really and the keeper had to be sure it was a good score from Nisha Waldron, his first of the game. Really good score, out on the sideline, over the shoulder. And we're all square. What a watch. Tidied up nicely there. Ronald Calacon was back there. He battled hard for it. He won it back. Khan seems to be the black sheep. He's a forward. Keane and Owen are expert defenders. I think Keane and Telly is a forward. Not many people listen to him. Put <laughs> away by Mark Linsky. A level for the first time in this game. Kula looking the more likely to go ahead. Evan Hanley runs into a bit of trouble, stays cool under pressure, and eventually, Cooks forced the free. 
Yeah, I think you've got Kyle Holden, the really good player, um, Aaron Matul's hurled really good tackling and just forced him into making the mistake. Probably a symptom of both teams is that they're trying to overplay things there. They're trying to do that extra hand pass or that extra touch and it's kind of leading to a lot of turnover. So, you know, both teams are very effective full forwards in there. So get the ball in as early as they can. Barry Rourke got two points at the start of the game. And, you know, Clinical haven't fed them at all since. And there's no point having a, a clinical player like that in if you're not going to give them the ball. If Damian Kelly was limping heavily. I wonder, is he going to go off here? He is. Hasn't really featured a whole pile in the second half. He's worked hard, he's battled, but maybe he's been carrying that injury for a while. In for him now is Connor Galvin. Damien Kelly's so experienced. Today's just a bit for. Shane Murphy, sorry, 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 not Shane Murphy, for um, Damien Kelly to leave the pitch, he's carried a bad knock. And the power tried to get there, he couldn't, it's Donald Lane. Good score from Donald Lane, his first. Very good score, Cooler coming up with good scores now, which is, you know, they've got a, a lot of different scores across the team, view, which is always good. Dylan. I beg your pardon, that's actually Hayes. Names it down for a two well policed by Mass. Mass keeps it in play. Crooks rob it back. It's Aaron O'Toole. That's got to drop inside. Keeper has to be careful and is. Now the key. Beal is under it, couldn't take it cleanly. Misha Waldron. Two on two inside. Collected well by Oran McGarrell. Gibbons hanging on to him. McGarrell still with possession. Fitzgerald is there as an option. Comes to Fitzgerald. He let fly here. Easy save for the keeper. Trying to keep it in play is Connor Galvin, who was clever in allowing that one to beat him so he could run onto it. But his finish doesn't match. Ben Hines again as well. Probably a weak enough shot in the end, but took control and things pass. Um, Connor Galvin, first touch of the ball, maybe a 70 yard shot isn't, isn't the right option. Maybe we should try play it again into, into Barry O'Rourke there, who is starved of possession that they're not feeding him at all. Linsky to Murphy, Murphy loses possession. Scooped up by Roran McGallert, McGarrett. McGarrett trying to get away from the Crokes chasing pack. And it over carries, and it is a free out. A big cheer from Crokes there, but good pressure forced him into overcarrying that they were so close to him if he threw the ball he knew he would get dispossessed so very good tackle folks Hines with the team's level a tight battle he fiercely fought one as well you can actually hear the rooks if that makes sense you can hear the hits we have a free out for Kula here yeah Shamer just got a, a bang in the rook there I think there's nothing too malicious just come together hurls and a free out for Kula Police will strike this. There's a, a tiny breeze behind him. Good catch. James Dillon. Dillon gets the chance to run. Over the top it goes. He's looking for Galvin and finds Galvin. Galvin tries to find Murray. Good ball by Murray. Will it open up for Connor Clinton? Connor Clinton. Wide. 
the umpire is ably assisted by Ryan DeFeese and Shane Stapleton. Really good catch there by Ryan Walsh. Drove out, takes his steps, finding a good pass, and that's a better play from him. Kind of good that they're getting the ball in. The fleece goes long, coming out to try and meet it is Andy Power. It's built into the path of Donald Lane. Lane back to Power. Rob Murphy gets something on it, but Power kicks it forward. Power brought to ground. Advantage being played. Kula have the free if they want it. Here's Donald Lane. They will take the free. Yeah, I think geez, I, I really think Rob Murphy's hard done by there that the um, Kula player, I didn't see who it was, kind of hit the ground fairly easy and Rob was kind of caught with his arm around him. This will likely be the last puck of the ball before the water break. You'd expect Brian Fitzgerald to slot this home already. He scored uh, three from place balls. And you can add another four from play. And Fitzgerald puts it over and Kula lead by one. And the referee calls them in for the water break. Well, what do you think? It's hard to know what to think, Ushi, to be honest. Um, Kula would be happy this is the first time they've led at any of the breaks. Um, Croaks have kind of gone away from what was working from at the start. That their forward line were, were getting on their full forward line were getting on good scores. Um, they probably become a bit too loose and, and taking too long or aimless balls in. They need to get back to the quick ball into Barry Rourke because that was what was working for them. Uh, cool have kind of picked it up and gone through the gears a bit. Uh, Nisha Waldron's pulling the strings out there. Got a great score from the sideline. Um, and the, the Kula probably have been the more impressive in this second half so far. Kula have certainly impressed in the second half. They do only lead by one though. So for Crooks, is it easy to go back to what they were doing or how does it work here? No, I, I think Kula have come to grips with it and they're putting pressure on Kilmer Kud. I think Kilmer Kud definitely need to take the extra second and the extra touch out of it and play more direct ball and quicker ball. The first quarter... Kilmacove were running with the ball and they, I thought I was like taking it back how light and quick they were and they've kind of gone away from that so they need to get players like Aaron O'Toole and Michael Roach and Alex Hatch was, was very effective in the first half and these players need to get back into the game again They did have a goal chance Kula who was well saved Brian Fitzgerald forcing the save but here he is from a free and he did the necessary I wonder what Kula are saying there they just really need to do Keep doing what they've been doing. Is that a fair assessment? Probably a fair assessment. They probably need to get a few more scores on the board for the amount of possession they have. Um, again, a, a smart distribution of the ball that they're kind of aimless. Uh, Ryan De Fleece has, has had a great game, but you know he's coming to take frees to put the ball 60 yards with a lot of height in on the full forward. Might be better trying to play a quick pass into the corner instead of the the, the aimless, hopeless ball or the, the hit and hope ball. Yeah, they all, 90% of the time, defenders come out with them, especially when Crokes are such big lads back there. Uh, Roman Walsh is, is, is winning good ball in the air, so if Kula can play more to their strengths and, and low balls into the corner, might serve them better. Well, since halftime, Kula lead by four points to two. Crokes struggling to get scores in the second half so far. Uh, Kula have made a change. They've actually made two. Tiernan Lane is in, as is uh, Dara Callahan. Quite catch you went off, but we'll um, inform you of that in a minute or two when we, when we see. So Kula through Nisha Walden, who's having a stormer, slots it back to Murphy. In behind is Oran McGarrett, runs onto it. He's in behind again, gets the free. Again, direct running. Uh, Oran McGarrett was the man brought down in the first half. And not sure who was the, the person that dragged down the first half but didn't get a yellow card of it now and, and this is where it becomes doing that this probably should be the card and, you know, if the ref had, had saw fit to give the yellow like we did in the first half this would be a different game now Kula by one that will surely become too soon Gibbons being spoken to by the ref and he gets he gets the yellow it looks like he's just kind of holding up a black book but the yellow is on the other side of it if you know what I mean Oh, 
over from Fitzgerald. Gibbons is taken off. Smart play given that he's just picked up a yellow card. Might break for James Dillon. Does break for Connor Hayes. Galvin back to Hayes. Hayes sprays it for O'Toole. O'Toole beaten to it by Mass. Good stick in there from Connor Clinton, but Nisha Waldron is back to clean up again. Yeah, he's had some since, since maybe the, the second quarter when he moved out the pitch from corner four and has gotten a heap of ball and he's doing the right thing with the ball every time. He's laying it in, he's laying good passes. Or on McGarrett, can he find some space? He pumps the fists after slotting that one over, his second of the game. Kula very much in charge at the moment, 15, plays 1-9. Really impressive performance from him. Uh, only second point of the game, but he's been dropped down, he's, he's won freeze, he's worked hard, so very good performance so far. Connor Galvin was fighting for it, Kula get the numbers in there as well. Michael Roach. Can Barry work it out to it, Shane Stapleton gets a hurley in there, very good defending. Stapleton is fouled, free out for Kula. Yeah, if I was a manager, I, I'd be hoping that Ryan De Fleece could try to find a pass in the corner here instead of what I think he's going to do, or put a long ball down on top of the square. Yeah, good take by Onshi. Doesn't get a whole pile of purchase on it. Running onto it is James Dillon and Kula have given away the free. Kim McCutter are a big strong physical team back there. Putting ball down on top of them like that, they're going to win 90% of their possessions. Try to do a quick catch him off guard, put them into the corner. Igor McGarrett there went in a heap of ball and had 30 yards of space to his right. Just try to find the pass with a bit of composure. James Murphy is in for Kula. It looks like Jack Toomey's work is done. He's limping off. Let's hope he's not too seriously injured. Hines drops for a red rather than a white jersey. Andy Power has been pulled back there by Ronald Walsh, but he does well to get it under control. Back door is the shout. That's a really strong take by Brian Fitzgerald. McGarrell has left completely unmarked. Fitzgerald will just tap it over. Great play, great positioning leading up to that, just kind of when the ball was struck, saw it was a high ball coming in and stepped in behind. And under a high ball, whoever's behind always has the advantage, so really good play. Hines. It came off the hearts early, deflects into the path of Connor Hayes, takes a hit but drives on. Dylan. And shovels it forward, but again, it's kind of aimless. Luckily for him, Galvin does get there. Michael Roach, still an awful lot of work to do before they can even get the chance for a score. They'll catch a break here. Connor Clinton runs onto it, takes the hit from the heart. Waldron there again, Beale swings at it. Donald Lane, a small man, but a big presence. That is a ferocious rook. And away come Kula. They've really been on top at the back in the second half. Shane Murphy. Nice tap out to James Murphy. Who's dispossessed. Ronan Walsh. Has a look up. Drops it inside. The odds are not in Croke's favour. Shane Stapleton taps it into the path of Donald Lane. Lane back to Stapleton. Clinton. Two. No room to shoot. And she runs into trouble. And it's kicked out over the line by Tiernan Lane. It's been a lot of aimless ball. Rowan Walsh here just underneath his head. A lot of time. He nearly could have set himself up for score. 
uh, instead put a, a high ball in on top of uh, Aaron O'Toole, who, who wouldn't be the biggest fella on a three-on-one situation. You know, if, if you're not going to take your score, try to put it into play or out in front of them. Uh, just just decision-making on both teams' fronts here hasn't been the best. Four between them, Kula lead. James Dillon shaping up to take the line ball. Is this break good for Kula or bad for Kula? Hard to say. You'd often more, more times than not say that breaks suit teams that probably don't have the momentum or are trying to change the flow of a game. Oh, the keeper's oh, lost it. Can Crooks take advantage? Not immediately, anyway. The heart goes to ground now, trying to get it up is Callahan. Callahan. That was a risky pass across the face of goal, but they get away with it. Out it goes to Tiernan Lane. Tiernan Lane taking on Owen Sheehy. Tiernan Lane doing really, really well. It's two on three in favour of Crokes, though. It ends up, I was going to say, in the hands of a red jersey. Eventually he does get it into hand and then hits it wide. He's frustrated. I think that's Brian Fitzgerald who hit it wide. Yeah, I like him. Would, uh, put your house on him to score from there, considering the, the form he's in as well. And the last five scores have gone the way of Kula. Brian Fitzgerald with three of those, or on McGarrett and Donald Lane also popping over points. Crokes have got 15 minutes without a score, and that score was a free. It was from Michael Roach. Yeah, uh, Kula have just kind of pulled away in the, in the last 10 minutes or so. They've kind of lifted the intensity, and Tom McCord haven't really been able to live with it. Barrio work being taken off. Crokes have made a change. They put a, a taller man on uh, um, Shane Stapleton. It is Jerville. Waldron again. What a game he's had. Man of the match. Neat turn by James Murphy. Ball goes up in the air. Crokes probably need a goal at this stage. Two minutes plus injury time to go. Andy Power. Nice work from McGarrett. Couldn't get it cleanly, but did hold it up there. Now it, well, I was going to say now it's in his hand, but again, he just couldn't get it up into the lava. Eventually, it's gathered by Connor Hayes. Spoon back to the goalkeeper. Pressurized by Andy Power. Beale couldn't take it. And it's a cooler ball. They're applauding everything at the moment because they're winning all the breaks. And that, that's not luck. They're working incredibly hard for it. No, it's not luck. But Kilmacud aren't helping themselves either. They're putting long ball after long ball. Um, Aaron O'Toole has been under two high balls there. And he's been playing very well, but that's not his game. He needs a ball out in front of him that he can run onto with lots of space. 70 yard ball with his two cooler men getting in on their break. It's not how Kilmacud have gotten any of their score. They seem to persist with that tactic. Waldron aiming it towards Andy Power. Good line ball, trying to get it cleanly is Rob Murphy. Murphy not fell, says the referee. McGarrett, a goal here will win it. It's Fitzgerald. Penalty. Seems to throw the hurl, did he? He's got the shout said anyway. out in the quarter final of the senior A looks like they're going out in the semi final of the senior B and having studied the replay on what's your assessment I'm not sure there's definitely a hurl throw but I'm not sure which player threw the hurl because the Fitzgerald was actually hooked going in so there's no need for him he was a, a player five metres back or so the yellow card has been divvied out there to own she the keeper has come up to take it to fleece so that means only one thing, they're going for goal. Yeah, this is probably with the nail in the coffin. Uh, 
you'd have to back the fleece from Egypt, striking the ball well. well. One of the Cokes defenders has dropped back. It is a penalty, so he's told get out of there. So the fleece against Hines, goalkeeper on goalkeeper. Quite often see keepers taking penalties. And they've spent 90% of their time striking the ball, so often they're well able to hit this. If this goes in, Kula go through. It's really that simple. They're likely going through anyway, but this would make sure of it. De Vlies. Oh, that's a magnificent finish. Rock, absolutely rock. Great penalty. Into the top left corner. Keep it, no chance there. Really, really good ball. And he emulates Davy Fitzgerald's run back down the park in the Caelic grounds. The referee now wants a word at Mark Linsky. It has truly gone south for Kilmacock Crokes in the second half. A bright start, but Kula got on top. Yeah, Kilmacock just probably lost their way a small bit. Kula up their, their game a couple of centimetres to the gears. And, you know, Nisha Waldron was a, was a big difference around the middle of the park, got a lot of ball and, and gave it in. Oran McGarrell's very, very impressive performance from him. And then, of course, uh, Brian Fitzgerald, with his, his three or four from play or whatever it was, but uh, another very impressive performance. Two yellow cards now for the remaining fullback line at Kilmer Cook Crokes because Mark Linsky got one there. Kula win the break again, Kula win the ball again. Waldron. Not happy with that lane, as in he isn't. James Dillon. Crokes need a goal, they need one quickly, and even that might not be enough because as it stands, they're going out. And they're six points down, seven points down. Ball into the corner. Brian Fitzgerald chases after it. He's pursued by Mark Linsky. Fitzgerald, advantage being played. They should be able to tap this one over, and they do. And Kula are sailing on to the final, where St. Finbar's lie in wait. Yeah, that'd be a great game. Um, two solid performances today. Finbar's played very well. Um, both coming off the back of two good results, obviously. So, you know, both neither team would fear each other going into that. Leif Humbiara up against Kula. We'll decide who will reach the Senior A finals tomorrow, the semi finals, both live on Dubs TV. Rob Murphy has to let fly, has to leave it in. An eight point gap as it's struck away by Niall Keane. Run and watch. Cool to have the numbers back. Left behind by Lahart trying to take advantage is Jervie. Jerville loses his hurley and Crooks will get the free. And you can see the frustration from Jerville. By the time he came in, the jig was up really. So it's frustrating for all the players. It's especially frustrating if you come into a game and you never had a chance in the first place. Yeah, and then the supply of ball wasn't there going in either. So definitely frustrating. So Michael Roach will take this. He does go for it, it doesn't beat the first man. O'Toole will no doubt learn from this experience. Still a very young lad collecting it as Ono Calicon. Over the head of Rob Murphy it goes. He's pressurised by Andy Power, who's really made a nuisance of himself today. He's worked incredibly hard. Down the park it goes from Connor Hayes. There's real congestion there. It does pop out for O'Toole. O'Toole goes low. Keeper saves it well. Who'll get the rebound? It is Crokes, but it's not struck cleanly. Left behind a bit there by Hines, or by uh, De Vlies. De Vlies eventually gets it away, much to his credit. James Murphy gives it away, back it goes to Rob Murphy who drop it in. Ronan Walsh slips out of his hands. A 
Hart runs it out, swats it then to James Murphy. The full time whistle goes, and Kula have beaten Crokes 117 to 19. Kula kind of pulled away towards the end. Just two points for Kilmacud Crokes in the second half, both before the water break, and that kind of sums up the second period for the Stillorgan based team. Kula still on for a double in senior hurling A and B because their uh, senior A team are in the semi finals tomorrow. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from the second half. Owen. Yeah, not much from the game itself, I should say, rather than the second half. When Kilmacud Crokes got this goal, we thought, oh, this game is going to be close because at that stage they did a strong margin. But Kula, as we can see, just kept tapping away. Yeah, Crokes lively first half, but apart from that, wasn't much of a contest really. And Kula pulled away a couple of really good performances from Kula with Brian Fitzgerald, Nisha Waldron. Uh, Ever Ono Callan in full in cornerback there for Kula. Everyone played really well, so strong performance from Kula. They a lot to build on going into the next game. They do indeed, and Nafi Umbera will find them hot to handle, but Gunbars themselves weren't too bad at all. Michael Gibbons driving up the line, dispossessed. Nisha Waldron, well, he was one of the men of the match, wasn't he? Along with this guy, Brian Fitzgerald, what a game he had. Yeah, and to have a resource like that, a target man that you can put ball into and he can just win his own ball is, is huge for a team. Uh, so definitely a massive asset to Kula there and they'll be looking to him against Finn Myers now Evan Hanley strong at the back Michael Roach putting this one over one of only two points for Crooks in the second half Donal Lane what a sweet strike that was McGarrett he was a real pain for the Crokes defence Brian Fitzgerald went for goal here look a standard enough save by Hines being brought to ground was Andy Power but got the advantage Don Lane thought about taking the shot but no Fitzgerald said I'll take on the free and why not when you can nail them like this McGarrett and this is the penalty no it's not the penalty the penalty is coming up but uh, Fitzgerald popped this one over. Again, McGarrett winning a free. McGarrett featuring again. I wouldn't like to be Willie Marr having to select only 15 players out of the squad of players he has at both A and B level. Great catch by Brian Fitzgerald. Did it from freeze, did it from play. And I think this is the penalty incident coming up here. McGarrett. Popped it inside Fitzgerald. I wonder, was it the flying hurley or whatever it was? Lovely finish from De Fleece. And that was that from there on in. Kula tapped over another couple of scores. Crokes tried their best to drop it in, but didn't really create a clean chance. And Kula are happy, but they will know the job is not yet done they're an ambitious club an ambitious team they will want to win both the A and the B title and they're still in both as we say uh, the A finals both coming up live tomorrow here on Dubs TV um, but before we leave the B finals on Kulip what are the positives they'll build on and what are the things that they'll want to, to work on ahead of the final positives they're definitely a couple of key performers uh, like we talked about Nisha um, Brian Fitzgerald or McGarrett um, really strong performance probably what what they need to work on is distribution of ball uh, probably could have got a few more scores but we're hitting Amos ball in um, kind of high ball in from 50-60 yards which they're going to need to improve because Finbars were a quality side today and quite aggressive strong backs so you know both teams now it'll be very hard to call the final I'm looking forward to that one that'll be a good game it will be good just before I let you go a quick word of tomorrow's double header of senior A semi-finals Luke and Sarsfields against Kula at 2 o'clock and Bally Bowden St. Endes against Nafina at 4.30 they'll be a, a couple of crackers won't they two cracking games hopefully yeah all the talk of Dublin Hurling is uh, they're 50-50 they can't call it Nafina is used against experience and then Kula, you know, Luke and massive underdogs going in against Kilmacud, but turn them over. So they'll be looking to bring the same energy in. But Kula, not much needs to be said about them. So hopefully, two cracking games.
Well, the B hurlers are clapping and cheering at the moment. Will the A hurlers also be clapping and cheering tomorrow? You'll find out live on Dubs TV. The first game between Kula and Lucan is off at 2 p.m. Then at 4.30, it's Bally Bowden St. Enders against Nafina. A cracking day's hurling in store tomorrow. You can still get your passes for that game. It is live across the afternoon on Dubs TV. For more detail, go to at Dub GAA official or you can find us on Instagram or Facebook or, of course, the website. That's it from the uh, B semi-finals St Finbar's earlier on cruising through they really put a big score up on Nafina I think it was 25 points to 13 in the end Akula in the end did the same here although in the first half it was kind of neck and neck but Akula finished by far the stronger especially in that last quarter 117 to 19 the final score and my thanks to you for watching we'll see you tomorrow bye bye